Netflix is finally bringing together all of its heroes in the long-promised Marvel miniseries, The Defenders. After each appearing in their respective solo shows, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist will be uniting for the first time on screen, and the idea has many fans clamoring for more of these street-level superstars. And there's no better place to satisfy that appetite than with a healthy portion of comic books. That's why we're coming at you with the single stories for each Defender that you absolutely must read. These are the tales that you should read if you can only read one single story about each character. Though, of course, you should always read as many comics as possible. That's just doctor's orders and common sense. So we'll start with the most difficult choice of the four, Daredevil. You could blindly pull a Daredevil comic out of a long box, and it's very unlikely to be a bad one. He's just the type of character who brings out the best in the writers and artists working on him, and always has. However, the run that truly stands out amongst the pack is the 2011 ongoing series, which brought the character out of the shadows and grime and into the sunlight again. Writer Mark Wade, along with his amazing collaborators Paulo Rivera, Marcos Martin, and Chris Samney, Wade established a newly and defiantly optimistic tone for the character that garnered numerous Eisner Award wins. Following years of stories that saw Matt Murdock beaten down and mentally tortured, this story saw Murdock finally decide to be happy. He returns to his wisecracking, swashbuckling roots as he takes on a bevy of classic villains, but there is an overarching feeling that his greatest fight is against the depression and darkness that is constantly threatening to creep back in. So the book opens with Daredevil stopping an attack on a mob wedding by the spot, and only gets crazier. He teams up with Captain America, fights Claw, and in an award-winning tale, he leads a bus full of kids through the woods in a blizzard. The team of artists on this book are truly astonishing and create a whole new visual language for Daredevil, from the use of sound effects to beautiful representations of his radar sense. They give Murdoch's world a pop and color that hadn't been seen on the character before or since. This beautiful run lasted for 36 issues, followed by 18 more from just Wade and Samney, and every single one is worth reading. But the first trade collecting the first six issues will be enough to hook you into reading the whole thing. Promise. This may not be the same style of Daredevil you see on the screen or in the typical noir-tinged Daredevil comic, but that's the point. This is not the Daredevil you're used to. It's even better. On the other side of the spectrum, Jessica Jones has far fewer stories to pick from. She's the newest of these characters by far, and has only had a couple of series where she was the lead character. One of these you've probably heard about, Alias, introduced Jessica. The first season of her show was a relatively faithful adaptation of the story, so if you've seen it, you have a pretty good idea of what Alias was like. A comic that doesn't get as much attention is its fantastic follow-up, The Pulse. Released in 2004, written by Jessica Jones co-creator Brian Bendis, with art by his Ultimate Spider-Man collaborator Mark Bagley, The Pulse begins with Jess in a relationship with Luke Cage, and they've recently learned that she is pregnant. To provide a stable income for their child, Jessica takes a job at the Daily Bugle, working for a new weekly section focusing on superheroes called The Pulse. Father to werewolf astronaut and notoriously anti-super people editor-in-chief J. Jonah Jameson, asks Jessica to be a consultant for the section, which features Ben Urich and other reporters more fair perspectives about superheroes than the usual bugle fare. She quickly gets swept up with the other reporters in a mystery surrounding the murder of one of their own at the hands of one of Marvel's most feared villains, the Green Goblin. As Jess and the crew chase this and other headlines, the true story unfolds. The story of Jess's pregnancy and her and Luke preparing for parenthood. It's pretty touching seeing how scared two people with superpowers get when faced with the sort of really scary things that so many normal people face every day. From thinking the baby is injured to simply worrying about how you'll put food on the table, Jess and Luke are simply human in this case, nothing super about it. The 14-issue series climaxes with the birth of Jess and Luke's baby daughter and features guest spots from Spider-Man, Wolverine, Fantastic Four, the New Avengers, and more. They're kind of like the wise men, I guess, you know, they come see the baby. It's different than Alias and not quite as heavy, but it's just as entertaining and just as important to who Jessica Jones is as a person. At the same time, when he was writing Luke in The Pulse, Bendis was also writing him as a member of the New Avengers. As one of the members of this newly formed incarnation of Earth's mightiest heroes, Luke pushed the team to do things differently, addressing problems from the streets up, and eventually blossomed into the team's respected leader. There's a great arc for Luke over the course of the series, but we can't exactly call it a Luke Cage story. However, 
right in the middle of that, amidst Marvel's first Civil War, we get an issue solely focused on Cage and his perspective, and it made for one of the most compelling issues of the run, end of Cage's career. In New Avengers number 22, Luke Cage is forced to deal with the reality of the Superhuman Registration Act, which means at midnight, he, Jessica, and their daughter will be criminals if they don't register with the government. Luke doesn't want to put his family in danger, but refuses to back down, not wanting to set that example for his daughter or for the people of Harlem. So he sends Jess away with their baby and simply sits in his home and waits for midnight, waiting to see how Iron Man and the government will treat a man for simply sitting in his home and being different. The issue is a powerful and intelligent story of nobility and resistance in the face of oppression that allows for Luke's character to shine brighter than it ever has. All of the new Avengers is totally worth reading for any Luke Cage fan, but if you want a single poignant story that tells you exactly who Luke Cage is, then you have to read New Avengers number 22. Written by Matt Fraction and Ed Brubaker, with art by David Aha, Travel Foreman, Kano, and Tanchi Zanyich, the immortal Iron Fist rejuvenated the character by building the Iron Fist legacy, showing readers previous wielders of the Iron Fist for the first time, and establishing that Kun Lun doesn't have a monopoly on mystical kung fu cities. That latter point came to the fore in the second arc, entitled The Seven Capital Cities of Heaven, which introduced Kun Lun's six sister cities via a tournament between each of their greatest warriors. There was Danny's nemesis Davos, now known as Steel Phoenix, as well as a host of new champions, Dog Brother Number One, Tiger's Beautiful Daughter, Bride of Nine Spiders, Prince of Orphans, and Fat Cobra. Each represented their respective cities in a tournament that occurred once every 88 years, when the cities converge, fighting for their place in the heavenly hierarchy. However, we quickly find out that there is much more going on than just a competition, as Danny learns more secrets of the Iron Fist and finds both enemies and allies in unexpected places. This story is as action-packed and imaginative as they come, and a perfect example of what makes the Iron Fist mythology so rich and fun. It has celestial conspiracies, crazy combat, cool characters, and gorgeous artwork. I mean, what more can you want? If you have to read an Iron Fist story, then you're guaranteed to have a blast reading The Seven Capital Cities of Heaven. There are plenty of choices for great stories for each of the defenders, so if you have your favorites, be sure to let us know in the comments, and be sure to subscribe for more videos.